Hello Saints and future Saints. Today's topic, our study topic for today, will be on the question of faith versus works. Now, the question is, why does Paul say in Ephesians that we're saved by faith alone without works, but James says in his book that salvation is the only uh, is is only acquired by faith plus works even saying that faith is dead without works now there's no other contradiction that's divided Christendom like these two particular verses have we have one group who believes salvation is by faith alone and another group whose conviction is to add works to their faith believing that without works faith is powerless and salvation is futile now taking a look at the majority of religions today we see that they tend to lean heavily towards a works based system trying to earn their way up the ladder of salvation attempting to bypass the way the life and the door which is Christ Jesus our Savior and Lord now when I say the majority, I'm talking about 99% of all religious denominations out there. They teach and subscribe to a works-based system. The same system and laws the nation of Israel was prescribed by God throughout the Old Testament and the early part of the New Testament, specifically the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And most people fail to realize that faith plus works will actually once again be prescribed to the nation of Israel during Daniel's 70th week immediately after the body of Christ is removed ending one dispensation starting up a new dispensation immediately after being caught up the rapture uh, from earth straight to heaven so but the elephant in the room is the seeming contradiction between the passages within God's Word and in order for the King James Bible to be trusted wholeheartedly it has to be without error it can't say one thing in one place and something contrary in another or can it if the entire Bible was written to us today then we'd have a problem because God's Word would be telling us to do things that uh, directly oppose one another causing confusion and we know without a doubt that God isn't the author of confusion so what's going on here the answer lies within the structure of how God wrote the Bible he wrote it to different people during different times for different reasons we call these dispensations or God's administrations now uncovering or understanding dispensations is done solely by rightly dividing his word accordingly. We see in 2 Timothy 2.15 uh, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now the two passages in question from Paul and James are Ephesians 2 and James 2 now if we look at Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9 for by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is a gift of God not of works lest any man should boast okay in James he writes in chapter 2 verses 14 through 17 what doth it profit my brethren though a man say he hath faith and have not works can faith save him if a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food and one of you say unto them depart in peace be ye warmed and filled notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needed to the body what doth it profit even so faith if it hath not works it is dead being alone now the first thing we need to do is look at James 1 1 it's very important in James 1 1 
James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. So, who is James writing to here? Is he writing to the body of Christ? No, it says clearly the twelve tribes, the Jews, the nation of Israel. He's not speaking to the body of Christ here. That's a huge clue to keep in the back of your mind, saints. Now, the two scriptures <clears throat> we just looked at that seem to be contradicting each other are really very easy to understand when you rightly divide them dispensationally. So, let's find out what dispensations are all about. Dispensationalism, along with right division, is a method for interpreting the Bible. The word dispensation is used four times in Paul's books in Romans through Philemon. Paul uses the word in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, Ephesians 1, Ephesians 3, and again in Colossians 1, a total of four times. Now, I've gone over specific meanings of the word dispensation in many of my other videos, and actually I'll be going a lot deeper into God's dispensation, specifically the seven dispensations in an upcoming study so keep an out keep an eye out for that uh, in the near future now in the study we'll be going through each dispensation all seven of them okay in detail and I'll be explaining to you how each was used by God to organize his people how he administered directions for specific time periods and so on but for the purposes of this study a simple definition of the word dispensation is how God dealt with humanity in different ways at different times as part of the process of revealing his character and his plan for mankind. For example, while salvation has always been by faith, the way to salvation in the Old Testament was through Israel and it required obedience to the law, which is works, plus faith. So salvation under the dispensation of the law, law being one of the seven dispensations, for Israel required faith plus works. Now today, however, we're living in the dispensation of grace, and no works are required for salvation. Today's dispensation of grace was a mystery revealed to Paul alone that one day God would build the body of Christ, making us fellow heirs with his son Jesus. So in our dispensation of grace it's faith plus nothing all we have to do is uh, all we have to do to receive salvation is to believe by faith what God tells us to believe for salvation now let's take a look at Romans chapter 4 verses 4 and 5 now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace but of debt but to him that worketh not but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness. Also, in Romans chapter 10, verse 4, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Also, in Galatians chapter 2, verse 16, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of of Jesus Christ even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified did you hear that for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified now we need to go back to the book of James to see our supposed contradiction once again to to get a clear example and to get a complete picture okay so in James chapter 2 verses 14 through 26 we read what doth it profit my brethren though a man say he hath faith and hath not works can faith save him if a brother or a sister be naked and destitute of daily food and one of you say unto him depart in peace but ye uh, be ye warmed and fulfilled and one of you say unto them depart in peace 
and be warmed and fulfilled notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needed to the body what doth it profit even so faith if it hath not works is dead being alone yea amen may say thou hast faith and i have works show me thy faith without thy works and i will show thee my faith by my works thou believest that there is one god thou dost well the devils also believe and tremble but wilt thou know o vain man that faith without works is dead was not abraham our father justified by works when he had offered isaac his son upon the altar seest thou how faith wrought with his works and by works was faith made perfect and the scripture was fulfilled with which saith abraham believed god and it was imputed unto him for righteousness and he was called the friend of god you see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith alone only likewise also was not rahab and the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out <clears throat> another way for as the body without the spirit is dead so faith without works is dead also so we need to ask ourselves a question and we need to be honest in how we answer this is there a difference in salvation methods between paul and james the answer is absolutely a resounding yes there is a difference between the two and without right division without understanding dispensations it would seem to be a contradiction but the truth of the matter is there is no contradiction between what james and paul say about salvation because each person is teaching under a different dispensation james is writing to the jews under the dispensation of the law while paul is writing to the body of christ both jews and gentiles under the dispensation of grace a completely different program or dispensation now james wrote to the jews despite what most christendom believes and teaches the 12 never had a ministry to the gentiles they ministered to jews only at the end of the jerusalem council the participants formally formally agreed to continue to abide by this state of affairs the jerusalem jews and those under their leadership would minister to jews and paul would minister to the gentiles in galatians chapter 2 verses 7 through 9 but contrary wise when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me as the gospel of the circumcision was unto peter for he that wrought effectually in peter to the apostleship of the circumcision the same was mighty in me towards the gentiles and when james cephas and john who seem to be pillars perceived the grace that was given unto me they gave to me and barnabas the right hands of fellowship that we should go unto the heathen and they unto the circumcision being the jews and with further truth we see who james was writing to in james 1 1 again we look at james 1 1 james a servant of god and of the lord jesus christ to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad greeting now the confusion the problem comes from mainline churches mixing these two dispensations together which is a big no-no and it, it's the cause for contention okay and and confusion the entire bible deals in dispensations jews and gentiles all of us okay are one or the other as far as God's concerned now in one of my earlier videos called hidden truth part 2 I went over in detail just who the Apostle Paul was his background his education his motivation his conversion from the law to grace now if, if you want to know more about Paul's background I highly recommend you watch it it's titled hidden truth part 2 but now 
we have James. Just who is this James character, okay, whose book we have in our Bibles? Now, the author of James was James the Just, a half-brother of Jesus, not to be confused with the Apostle James, who was the son of Zebedee, who was uh, one of the twelve apostles, who was martyred around 44 AD by Herod, okay, the, grand, the grandson of Herod the Great. Now, look here with me at Galatians chapter 1, verse 19. But other of the apostles saw I none, save James the Lord's brother. We see Paul here telling us that this particular James was not one of the twelve, and it's clearly Jesus' half-brother in any case. James was not one of the original twelve, okay, and he was therefore a second order apostle. By the time Acts 15 comes around, however, he had superseded Peter at Jerusalem. It wasn't James, it was James, not Peter, who was in charge of the council of Jerusalem in 51 AD. At that council, the Jerusalem apostles met with Paul to address the problem of the Gentile salvation under Paul's ministry. Like the twelve, James was a Jew who'd been saved by believing the gospel of the kingdom, that, that Jesus was the Messiah, the Son of God, while keeping the law, okay? Faith plus works. Now, James had not believed in Christ while Jesus was alive. We see this in John chapter 7. Uh, verses 2 through 5. Now, the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence, and go into Judea, that thy disciples also may, uh, may see the works that thou doest. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and he himself seeketh to be, no to be known openly. If thou do these things, show thyself to the world for neither did his brethren believe in him james didn't believe in his own half brother jesus okay he came to the salvation after the lord's resurrection james came and got saved only after jesus rose from the grave and then seeing jesus come back to life was proof enough for for james to believe and and that's where the you know his conversion took place so James wrote his uh, his epistle before Acts 15 now he knew only the Old Testament prophetic program okay the gospel of the kingdom and the uh, the Mosaic law he, he knew nothing of Paul's secrets the secret gospel of grace the the theme or purpose of James's letters was to encourage Jews to ensure trials with faith and wisdom which would result in joy and in James chapter 1 verse 2 through 5 we read my brethren count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations knowing this that the trying of your faith worketh patience but let patience have her work uh, perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire wanting nothing if any of you lack wisdom let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not and it shall be given him for James to write what he wrote in James 2 18 okay yea a man may say thou hast faith and I have works show me thy faith without works and I will show thee my faith by my works James wrote what what was taught all throughout the Old Testament Gospels. It was consistent with Jesus' early ministry, the kingdom on earth, okay? No one told James or the Twelve that the dispensation of law, the, the Mosaic law, was over. No one told him that faith alone in Christ's death and resurrection had become the new dispensation, the new means of salvation, all right? It wasn't until the council at Jerusalem that this matter would come to a head and Peter would present Paul's revelation and would also side with Paul's decla declaration of the mystery gospel, the dispensation of grace, salvation by faith alone without works. All right. 
So understand that only after Paul began to teach these things did the twelve had have any understanding of these doctrines. They were Pauline revelations given to Paul by the ascended glorified Lord Jesus. Now if you notice closely, James reads like an Old Testament book because that's what it is. When James wrote his letter, okay, he was still operating under the Mosaic law. Even following the Council of Jerusalem, he couldn't fully comprehend the implications of that decision. We see this uh, when Luke writes in Acts chapter 21, verse 17 through 20, And when we were come to Jerusalem, the brethren received us gladly, and the day followed Paul following and the day following Paul went in with us unto James, and all the elders were present. And when he had saluted them, he declared particularly what things God had wrought among the Gentiles by the ministry. And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe, and, and they are all zealous of the law. See, James greeted Paul and rejoiced with him about salvation of the Gentiles. But what he was really excited about was the salvation of the, of the Jews, his brethren, and the fact that they were zealous for the law. He still didn't get it at this point. God had spent 1,500 years pounding in the law, okay? And the law was so <clears throat> ingrained in their thinking that it was hard to get it out of them. So Paul records how difficult it was to pull the law out of the minds of the twelve in Galatians chapter 2, verse 11 through 14. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I, was, I withstood him to the face, because he was to be blamed. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. And the other Jews disassembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the, truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou, being a Jew, livest, livest after <clears throat> the manner of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? <clears throat> you see, Peter repents of this failure. But even at the end of his life, he failed to understand much of Paul's teachings. They were hard to understand. But one thing Peter admitted is that Paul was right. And that's huge. Peter's last words tell us in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 14 through 16. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless, and account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their, their own destruction. Now, Peter recognized that God had given revelations to Paul that he hadn't revealed to the twelve. He recognized believers were to go to Paul for their doctrine, okay? And that uh, that's what Paul had written. Was it was a scripture on par on par with Moses and the prophets. So to reject Paul was to warrant God's condemnation. Okay. 
Only in Paul's letters do we have doctrine for the church, the body of Christ. To reject Paul's letters is to reject the revelation the Lord Jesus Christ gave to Paul to be the apostle of the Gentiles and the founder of his church. In Romans chapter 11, verses 13, For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. So, we see that salvation in the Old Testament involved faith and works. And James wrote from that perspective. Okay, The ascended, glorified Lord revealed to Paul the gospel that required faith alone. Sola feed for salvation. Okay, now both James and Paul were were correct, but each must be understood in its proper context and time frame. Understanding dispensations is the key here, folks. So James doesn't contradict Paul when he wrote faith and works were required for salvation. You see, Acts is a transitional book. It's the actions that took place while one dispensation transferred over to the next dispensation. For time, both programs, Israel and the church, and both gospels, the gospel of the kingdom and the gospel of grace of God, were actually valid. At the conclusion of the Council of Jerusalem, only one gospel remained. And from that point forward, Paul's gospel was the only valid gospel. When the church, the body of Christ, is complete, what Paul described as is the fullness of the Gentiles in Romans 11, the rapture will take place. God will restart the gospel of the kingdom after the rapture, okay? In Matthew 24, we read about that. Right into Daniel's 70th week, or the seven-year tribulation period, as some would call it. Now, the focus during Daniel's 70th week will once again be all about the earthly program the coming king Jesus his second coming and salvation will be through faith plus works once again same program the 12 preached as well as James now in closing keep in mind the only books to us today are Paul's books Romans through Philemon the books of James Peter John Jude Revelation Matthew through Mark are all about the coming earthly kingdom. They're written to the nation of Israel about Daniel's 70th week going into the millennial reign, the 1,000 years of Christ Jesus' reign on earth, setting up the earthly kingdom. Now, if you understand how to keep God's word correctly divided per dispensation, you'll dodge the many false teachings out there Okay, that try to combine the church program with Israel's program causing all kinds of confusion. Peace and grace in Christ Jesus unto all of you. Thank you for studying with me, my friends, and I'll see you on my next video.